Coach Brandon here. Today we'll be talking about saturated fat. Now, I personally meal prep and consume a ton of red meat that's very high in saturated fat and get asked often, why do you eat so much red meat? Now, I could go on a long talk about how it's very micronutrient rich and it's perfect for adherence because I can eat it every day unlike something like chicken. At the same time, the reason I'm being asked this is because saturated fats still seem to uh, have many different negative health consequences such as forming plaque in arteries, causing heart disease, and many other so today we're going to go ahead and get a little deeper into what saturated fat actually does and look at some new studies behind it. Now first and foremost, in 2014 there's the biggest meta-analysis ever done on saturated fat looking at 72 different studies in 18 different countries. And what it actually found was that there was no relationship between high levels of saturated fat and heart disease, which is kind of the major claim behind saturated fat for so many years, which is why organizations like the FDA has tried to limit our, our, our consumption of it, or at least suggest it. To. Now, next, in 2016, there's a randomized controlled trial that looked at different levels of refined sugar and saturated fat in people's diets and how they responded to them. And what it found was that a diet high in saturated fat and low in refined sugar not only didn't uh, increase the risk of heart disease, but also decreased the amount of fat stored in the heart as well as the liver, and also decreased blood pressure and uh, improved insulin sensitivity, which again goes to show that it may not be as bad as we once thought and definitely doesn't block not belong in the category of a bad fat. And lastly, my personal favorite, this last study looked at um, having the refined sugar equivalent of one soda per day in young healthy individuals and after a few weeks tested how their body responded to this. And what they found was that uh, the, the uh, amount of small dense LDL particles in their body increased exponentially along with C-reactive protein increasing by 60 to 100 percent over baseline, which is an incredibly high amount. And keep in mind, C-reactive protein is an indicator of dietary inflammation. So this is a very important thing that I'll get into in just a second. But first we have to understand that size matters. In LDL, its <laughs> size very much matters. Small dense LDL compared to large buoyant LDL have very different uh, consequences to them. Small dense LDL uh, circulate in the body and in your system far too long because it can't get endocytosed properly and this causes increased likelihood of it going through transformations. Now having a high amount of small dense LDL particles along with having high amounts of dietary inflammation is the perfect storm for having plaque form and arteries, having heart disease, and many other very negative health consequences. So this is really what we should be afraid of. This is, this is something that's actually concerning. High levels of saturated fat alone, for the most part, don't actually cause these things, which is why we've tried to limit it for so long is because we thought it did. So again, a lot of new studies are showing that high amounts of saturated fat may not be as concerning as we once thought. It may not belong in the bad fat category. But there is one more thing to consider, and that is genetic variance. Polymorphisms in certain genes actually varies how our body responds to different diets, different macronutrient ratios, and even saturated fat. And more specifically, a polymorphism in the PPAR alpha gene has been found to vary how, how, how someone responds to saturated fat so much that having high amounts of saturated fat actually increases exponentially the amount of small dense LDL particles, uh, fat stored in the heart, and ever other really important things such as this, similar to how people responded to refined sugar in that study I, I mentioned before. So again, when it comes to saturated fat, it, it likely doesn't belong in the category of bad fat. Having high amounts of it isn't inherently bad. In fact, there actually may even be some health benefits from it, for the most part, especially when you compare it to a diet that's high in refined sugar. But at the same time, there are very specific situations like polymorphisms in certain genes, such as PPA or alpha, that may vary someone's reaction to saturated fat. I think that about covers for this topic. It's Brandon Morgan signing out.